All right, so we're gonna do the low voltage wiring on this A2L air conditioner. I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it takes. Hopefully you do not have this situation where you have three pairs of red and white because that's always really fussy to deal with. Thankfully it looks like they just didn't have enough wire to get the five wire to here. So we're just going to make sure that these are hooked up to where they should be. Okay, and then this one goes to the air conditioner so we can actually just disconnect these. And we're gonna be moving the thermostat wires from here up to the new controller. So these are no longer going to feed down into the furnace, but are instead going to hook up on this. Right here you can see they give us a C, R, W1, W2, Y1, Y2. And then we have this plug, which comes from that little sensor inside of the coil. Here's what that sensor looks like mounted in the coil, and it is just detecting for any flammable gas which this will be plugged in right here. There we go. So that's that plugged in. And then we'll grab the harness and plug that in here. And we're just gonna land the thermostat wires onto this terminal block. So here's that jumper wire that they provide. So this plugs into the board. And then these actually land on the equipment board, which is right down there. So Simeon's gonna hook these up and just hook them up according to the wiring diagram right here on this kind of rippled sticker you'll have this A2L output wire. That's only for equipment that has an A2L terminal. If you have an A2L terminal on your control board, then you would hook this A2L wire up to your uh, control board. In this case, we don't, so we just are gonna use the green wire right here and hook that to the G terminal on the fan. And then there's a couple of dip switches right here on the bottom of the board. For use with five tap motors, set switches to on to allow G with Y calls. For use with nine tap motors, set switches to off to disable G with Y call. Um, I believe what they're talking about is the number of taps for the, the actual blower motor. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, and then the neutral. So that's five wires going to the blower motor. So I believe that they want this one in the on position. An ECM motor might have like a nine pin connector and that would be the different speeds that that would run but in this case they want the G call at the same time as the Y call so we're going to leave these dip switches up like that so it's normally closed with G so it's in the on position here so we're not going to switch those dip switches so your connections on the equipment side are going to be your air conditioner Y and C that go out to the contactor coil and then you'll have your Y call from the uh, leak detection controller you'll have your W1 call if you have a W2 you'll have your W2 call in this case we don't just the just the W call there <clears throat> and then of course your R which powers the controller and sends power up to the thermostat through the controller the G which is what it's going to bring on if it ever detects a leak and the C, which allows the controller to use the 24 volts because this is just a 24 volt common. Of course, the other wire on the C goes out to the air conditioner. Then we have extra wires here because this is kind of the simplest control board that you could probably hook up to. Uh, this purple is the humidifier wire, which we're not using. This one is the A2L wire, which only is used on boards that have an A2L terminal. Um, this one is the second stage cooling wire, so we're not using that. I think this brown one is the second stage heating wire, and this orange one is the reversing valve, so if you had a heat pump, you would hook this up. If you had second stage heating, you would hook the brown up. If you had second stage cooling, you'd hook the Y up. Humidifier, you would hook up this purple wire, and yeah, that A2, A2L wire. So in this case, we're just going to leave these disconnected and cut. I think they're safed off enough just having the wires cut flush like that. So I'm actually not going to do anything else to them. Um, just leave everything hooked up like that. They show a bunch of different wiring diagrams in the booklet here for different configurations depending on your equipment. But for some reason they're not showing a single stage heat, single stage cool furnace with a PSC motor. Everything that they're showing here is like an ECM multi-stage gas furnace. Um, although they did, they did mention a five tap blower motor and we do have our dip switches in the correct position for that. But you can see there's all kinds of different 
layouts here. So presumably you'll have access to your booklet. So you'll just want to double check some of that stuff before you actually hook everything up. But I think that we've got it hooked up properly and we should be good to actually start the system. So it actually came with the jumper between the test and common. Now we've got it between the common and normally closed terminals on there. But it kind of confused us because it seemed like the system was not going to operate as if it had a refrigerant leak already, but I don't think it does. So Simeon went to cycle it to cool. We'll see if we get a call here and go from there. So I just pulled the jumper from there and moved it up, plugged it back in. I heard the air conditioner shut off. You can hear the refrigerant still flowing through the line a little bit. So the sensor is working as it should. Now we'll want to move it back. I don't know if there's a delay built into the controller or if it just starts the air conditioner again right away. I'm guessing there's some kind of a delay. We're gonna also test it in heat mode. Okay, sounds like it started the air conditioner again. So there just must be a couple minute delay. All right, so we just turn it on in heating mode now. See the burners have lit. In a moment here, the blower will come on. But same thing, if we pull that test pin and move it down, it shuts everything down and it just runs the fan. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this move it to the test pin so it should shut the heat off which it did and it should just leave the fan on so we're good it is indeed operating as it should so they're really not too bad to install I, I just don't like that we're increasing the complexity of our equipment in addition to now having a flammable flammable asphyxiant gas in our homes it just doesn't seem like the best idea but the government in all their mighty wisdom is mandating that this is what we have to do So the system actually did have a really short line set, so we didn't add any refrigerant to it. Um, you can see it only has 2 pounds 12 ounces. So they have reduced the amount of refrigerant that's in these things by quite a bit. Um, Simeon got the insulation put on there. I think it looks pretty good. So that's it for this one. Mm -hmm. Any final words? Nope. Alright. That's it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.